When we launched the CJN Daily in May of 2021, one of our first stories was about Jewish organizations urging people to fill in the new Canadian population census, which was being conducted that month. It was important, they said, because the 2016 census was so poorly designed, it didn't ask about religion, only about ethnic origins, and then they didn't give people the option to select Jewish. So when the data came out, it showed the size of Canada's Jewish community was actually half of what it should have been, at about 144,000 people, while other surveys had reported 329,000 Jews. So after much outcry, suggestions were sent in for how to fix the census for next time. Stats can put in more accurate categories and hoped a truer picture of the size of the country's Jewish community would emerge. And it has. The data came out Wednesday, and here is the preliminary number. More than 335,000 people said they are Jews by religion. That's up nearly 6,000 from 10 years ago, And although it's quite a small increase in the population, about less than 2%, analysts think it shows good news for now. I think that in terms of assimilation, intermarriage, and and those sorts of things, fertility rates, by and large, the Jewish community in Canada is holding its own. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, October the 27th, 2022. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. So why does it matter how many Jews there are in Canada? Well, aside from a point of pride, Canada is still home to the third largest Jewish diaspora in the world outside of Israel. The other important reason is that Jewish federations and other organizations use these numbers to plan for schools and summer camps and seniors programs and also to lobby governments for funding. And that's where another finding is concerning, because the census found that while there are more Jews, they represent a smaller slice of the overall Canadian mosaic than they used to. We're down to less than 1% of Canada's population, as more and more immigrants change the makeup of the country's faith groups, which could weaken the impact of our collective voice. So coming up, we'll break down the new numbers with Professor Morton Weinfeld of McGill University. He's one of the country's most influential researchers on the Canadian Jewish population. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Les Rothschild. I'm president of the Canadian Zionist Federation, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. The Manitoba legislature has been urged to adopt the IRA definition of anti-Semitism after an opposition liberal MLA from Winnipeg, Dr. John Gerard, formally notified his colleagues on Wednesday he'll be bringing this motion forward. Gerard is not Jewish, but he represents the River Heights riding, which does have a large Jewish population. He says he's been working closely with B'nai B'rith in Winnipeg for months to get Manitoba to become the fifth Canadian province to adopt this international policy, which sets out what Holocaust denial looks like and what anti-Semitism looks like. Dozens of countries have adopted it already. Alberta did so last month. Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick have also adopted it, as has Canada. Now, Gerard says Manitoba's government could still go ahead to adopt the definition on its own and steal his thunder. And in fact, they may pass an order in council making that happen, And sources tell the CJN we could see this happen as early as this week. But Gerard would still like to see his motion be debated next week, as it would give his 56 colleagues a chance to vote and adopt it unanimously. And joining me now is Professor Morton Weinfeld. We spoke to you in May of 2021, when the 2021 census was being rolled out. And there were a lot of important um, Jewish leaders and yourself demographers urging the Jewish community to fill it out as best they could because there was a a very big question about how many Jews live in Canada. And so let's start from that. Uh, So here's the good news. I suppose it's good news, Ellen. Uh, In terms of the the census counts Jews in two ways, as I'm sure your audience may know. One is by religion. And they ask Canadians, what is your religion? And the other is by ethnic origin or ethnic ancestry. So in terms of religion, the uh, number of of Canadians who claimed to have Jewish religion was 335,000, right? 335,000. That's sort of good news. Why? Because 10 years ago, that number was 329,000. So that's an increase of about 6,000 Canadians uh, who claimed that they are Jewish. 
by religion. Okay. Now that's good news compared to the expectations of dramatic decline, which some people may feel. The Jews are not disappearing. The Jews are not assimilating in large numbers. Uh, that's fairly good news, but that's what you have. Now, what we're going to be doing in a few weeks is combining the religious question with the ethnic origin question. Because as you and many of your audience know, there are many Jews who don't think of themselves as Jewish by religion, for whatever reason, but they'll claim ethnic origin. So what, what some analysts will be doing in the next few weeks is adding up those Jews by religion, plus all those Jews by ethnic origin who did not pick the Jewish religion for whatever reason. Right now, we're estimating about 380 to 390,000 total Jewish people in Canada. But we'll see how that works out uh, later on. So 380,000-ish, 390,000 is about what you thought it would be when you told everyone and everyone was to told to well, fill out. Th this the form, figure right? was actually a number that was computed by, by demographers in Israel uh, based on the data from 2011 plus Jewish fertility rates, Jewish mortality rates, and Jewish intermarriage rates. Now, to be honest, all of that could have changed over the past 10 years. We don't know yet. No one knows yet, but we will know uh, shortly. But th the good news is there will not be any dramatic decline in, in the Canadian Jewish population. So we can talk more about those absolute numbers, but we can also try to unpack what those numbers can mean in terms of the reality for Canadian Jews. Well, I'd like to do that because the, the government put out these huge data sets talking about by city, by province. Have you had a chance to look up where the Jews are? Like who's number one city? Who's number two city? Is there any change? Is Vancouver coming up to the second city? What about Montreal? There's a lot to go through. So maybe we can start at the beginning. Well, uh, to be honest, well, I have look not at any of that? done yeah. this micro analysis, but I'm pretty sure uh, that Toronto is still number one. Montreal is still number two. Vancouver may be gaining a little bit, but that's where the Jews are. The Jews are in big cities in Canada. They've always been in big cities in Canada. There's nothing new there. Right. But housing costs are pushing Jewish community, uh, young Jewish people outside to like Barrie, to Innisfil, to outside moving Windsor because they can't afford to buy a house in these big cities. You don't have any data about that yet, right? The Canadian census might have some data. Remember, these data were collected in June of 21. So we may see an uptick as you just said, in some of these smaller outlying communities like Windsor. That would be very interesting. And that, frankly, Ellen, would be new if we saw that kind of uptick. And in terms of like the largest Jewish community outside of Israel, Canada was like number four, I think, or including Israel was number four and in outside was number three. Is that still well, true? Uh, the way, it, the way it, it looks right now, United States, uh, leaving aside Israel, uh, uh, United States is number one, France is number two, and Canada is probably number three, overtaking Britain. All in all, I would say, in terms of demography, I would say the Canadian Jewish community, this may be surprising or shocking, is doing fairly well in terms of Jewish diasporas on the planet. Um, now, will this continue in the future? I don't know. There are some debates as to whether assimilation, like in the U.S., will eventually kick into Canada or not. The key thing to look at will be this Jewish ethnic origin number. And, uh, and, and, and that's where we'll have some other estimates. You know, it's very complex. For example, if someone sa says, I'm not Jewish by religion, I'm not Jewish by, e I don't, I'm not Jewish by ethnic origin, but you know, I was born in Russia and I lived in Israel. Should they be counted as a Jew, right? That kind of question. But remember, we're going to know more when we unpack intermarriage rates, fertility rates, and all of those other uh, issues. That's a big issue more in the States. That, and Pew studies have shown that, and there's a, a big change in the States. 
uh, we've always been sort of proud in Canada, the Jewish community, but well, we're not like them. We're still um, affiliated with our institutions. We're still having more kids going to Jewish day school, things like that. So what do these numbers, if anything, say about that continuation to differentiate well, with this? Remember, the census has not, does not get into any of the uh, you know, nitty gritty of Canadian Jewish identity. No day schools, no kosher, no Shabbat. Uh, we'll find some data on intermarriage. I'm sure the rate of Canadian Jewish intermarriage will remain much lower than in the United States, but it may be inching up because the Canadian Jewish population has been more immigrant than the United States, and also Canadian multiculturalism may make for a better uh, environment for, for, for Jewish continuity. On the other hand, if I can just get back to the religion variable, because this is important. You know, the religion variable is the foundation for counting Canadian Jews. You know, the question is very simple. What is your religion? Okay. And you can answer only one. The Canadian census only gives you one option about your religion. So if you are a Chrismica person, I think your audience knows what I mean by that. You have, let's say, a Christian and a Jewish parent, right? You have to pick one for the Canadian census. You can't pick two like you can for the ethnic origin question, where you can pick three or four or what have you. You gotta pick one. So what's what, what I'm wondering about, and I don't think I have the answer, is if they decide to tell the census taker that they are Jewish, then the Jewish community counts them. But supposing these people are, let's say 40% in their view Jewish, and 60% Christian. So they'll say Christian, which is fine, but the Jewish community has lost them in terms of counting. We don't know what's going on with this large chunk of partial Canadian Jews. And, you know, and, and this chunk is gonna grow lo uh, larger over the years. Is there anything else you think that um, Jewish community leaders will be looking besides, you know, uh, for political reasons, but also in terms of how they plan for seniors homes and uh, schools, things like that? Where do these numbers speak to that at all? These numbers are always very useful for Canadian Jewish planning, for community planning. They have been and they remain a terrific tool, a useful tool. And um, that's not going to change. Now, as long as we're talking about religion, let me say that the, uh, the, the, the percentage of the Canadian population that is Jewish has declined a bit. It went down from 1.1% 10 years ago to 0.9%. Why? Because other groups increased more rapidly than, than the Jewish group did. And, um, there are different immigrant groups, different ethnic groups, they increase different religious groups. Just for comparison purposes, in case some of your audience are interested, if you take the Muslim group, for example, there are 1.8 million uh, Canadians who claim the uh, Muslim religion, and they make up 4.9% of the Canadian population. All right. Actually, it's very sad when you see something go below 1%. I've never seen Canadian Jews go one below 1%, 1 even during the Second World War. As you know, my book came out the same day yours did. We, we shared a, a launch. Right. Um, and Jews were still over 1.1 or 1.3% of the population right. in the Second World War. So to go below that, is this the first time they've dropped below 1% since well, then? Well, let me tell you that I saw one figure that said 1%, another that said 0.9%. There could be some rounding errors here. But rest assured, the Jewish percentage of the Canadian population is not growing and likely is not going to grow in the future. Now, this is unfortunate, but it's just, you know, the immigrants that are coming to Canada uh, 450,000 now are, are not, do not include that many Jews. The good news, Ellen, is that the Canadian population, you may have seen a survey result that came out today in Vironics, to a, a large extent, it's very positive on immigration. Uh, but what's, what's interesting, what's happening in Canada is the way in which the Jewish position with regard to other groups is also changing demographically. So Canada is becoming less white, is becoming less religious, it's becoming less European as well. 
the so the question that one wants to ask is you know what effect if any does any of this have on the status of jews within canada for example if there are some canadians here i'll be very provocative is that okay ellen i think so if there are some jews in canada who are very worried about defending Jewish interests. We're not talking about population growth now. We're talking about the defending Jewish interests, even let's say politically. So then the number of Jews becomes a political issue. Where are these Jews living? Who will they vote for? Canadian political parties uh, are very, very good at figuring out where Jews and other minority groups happen to live and try to help uh, their candidates get elected, all right? So, you know, these are delicate questions that Canadian Jews will have to ponder in terms of trying to find their space in Canada's ethnic mosaic. Now, there's already a lot of information on the Statistics Canada website, so we've put the link in our show notes so you can see it for yourselves. For example, according to the census, more than 2,800 people identify as Messianic Jews, and there are slightly more Jewish men than women. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Mitch Abbey in Toronto. And we'll end the show and the week with a sneak peek at a coming episode that you won't want to miss. We check in with Broadway star Casey Levy. She's originally from Hamilton, and she's best known for starring as Elsa in the original stage version of Frozen. Now she's appearing in Sir Tom Stoppard's new very Jewish Holocaust play called Leopoldstadt. It just opened in New York. If you're a Jew, no matter how you identify, you're going to see part of your story told in this piece because so much of what is explored in the show, it's not about, um, it's not exclusively about how do you practice? How do you identify? What are your feelings on Israel? That all trickles in in various parts, but at the core of it, it's about remembering our ancestors. <laughs> Join author Karen Levine in marking the 20th anniversary of the extraordinary true story behind her beloved children's book, Hannah's Suitcase. You'll hear how the curator of a small Holocaust museum in Japan wound up on an incredible global journey, searching for a young girl named Hannah Brady. Sunday, October 30th at 2 p.m. at Beth Emmett Synagogue in Toronto. To learn more and register for free, visit beby.org slash event slash OCT30.